Okay guys, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I edit my 360 videos for YouTube. This is one of my YouTube channels and I use 360 cameras for pretty much all of my videos just because I like the perspective it can give. But there's a bit of a certain way I edit, so I'm going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. First of all, you're going to make sure that you have downloaded Insta360 Studio from insta360.com and you want the latest version, you just want to download it. Then once you've downloaded it, you want to open it up and open up your 360 files. So I'm going to drag this example in. So here's our clip. It's a clip of me walking down a really narrow bridge in Reunion Island. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to reframe this clip. So you'll notice here at the bottom, if you're new to Insta360 Studio, we've got the timeline, which we can click and scrub across. We can click and drag on the screen to pull our camera around. We can use two things on the trackpad and zoom in and out. But first things that I like to do is to trim my clip down. So what I do here is you can either drag these white bars into where you want your clip, or you can press Command and the left bracket, and it'll bring that into there. And we'll just do a 10 second clip and we'll do the right hand bracket to there. So this is our clip now, 10 second clip. The first way to do this, if you have a video like mine here, so you've got a shot like this where the camera is following me like this. What we can do, we can use this button here called deep track and we can draw a square around our object. And Insta360 will actually pick up on it there. Or we can click and drag and draw a square around me. Uh, center the target, start tracking. This is dependent on how you want your shot to look. But there's all the editing for you. If we play that back now, you'll notice you could save that now and it's pretty much ready to go. But if you want to get a little bit more creative with your 360 footage, what I like to do is I like to use uh, something called keyframes. So keyframes basically points in your video that we can position our camera and then the software will move the camera between the keyframes and the transition. So we press Command and K and we'll put a keyframe here. And you'll notice we have all these options here. So we've got crystal wall, tiny planet, natural view, and default view, which is a bit more wide angle. I like this view. But I'm going to start my footage here so you can see my feet. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then we're going to press spacebar. Play our clip. Now what I want the camera to do is pan round to see me. So I'm going to put a keyframe here, Command and K, and you'll notice there that's the transition between there. And if I play this now between the two keyframes, you'll notice it will move between these two keyframes, like so. And we can adjust these keyframes so we can play around with the distortion, we can play around with the field of view, we can play around with the rotation, the tilt, the roll angle, you can do all sorts on it. And the, the actual software will transition between these two really nicely. And obviously the more keyframes you add in, so if we add one there, and we want to go there, this is going to look a bit strange, but I'll show you now what happens. It will transition between the two keyframes and they're probably going to pan back now. So that is a little bit different. But you can get really customized with this and really personal depending on how much movement you want to show in your footage. And if you're doing videos for YouTube, you want to make sure it's on 16 by 9 as well. So this is the aspect ratio. And we can choose 9 by 16 for social media. But I always just go 16 by 9 for YouTube. If you want to grab a screenshot for a thumbnail maybe, you can click this button and it will grab a screenshot right there you can save. We have all these buttons on the side here, directional lock, so you can use that, which I'm not going to get into this video, we're just going to keep that off for now. I have other videos on my channel explaining directional lock. Stitching, depending on if you're using a sticky lens guard, you might want to turn this on or off, but I never have sticky lens guards. And you can do a little bit of image processing as well. Again, I like to do this in a different program, but if you want to just do a little bit in here, you can play around with the clarity and color on your footage before you export it. You can also add a logo to your footage, which I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can. Or you can add a custom logo also. 
So once you're happy with your footage, let's go ahead and export it. So we want to make sure we are tapped on here, reframe, not 360 view. So click reframe. And then we want to click this button here, export. And for YouTube, I generally don't go the highest bit rate possible because the file sizes generally go massive and YouTube also compresses videos. So I, for YouTube, I probably go between 80 bits on the bitrate scale and 100, sorry, 100. And then I would probably put the resolution here if you want 4K to 2160 and keep this encoding format H.264. Rename it and decide where you want to save it and then just click start export. So once it's exported, you can click export history, right tap on that, open in folder. And here is our reframed clip. Now, if you want to upload this straight to YouTube, you can go onto YouTube, open up the crate and click upload video. And I like to literally just drag and drop my video in there. So that is how I reframe my 360 videos and upload them to YouTube.